All right, hey everyone, it's John at Evolve. Today we want to take a quick look at a Mustang Mach E and sort of what's under the hood. So this one was in a collision in the front end and we have it here in our diagnostic bay to start to do the uh, disassembly process and testing to see what's um, potentially wrong with the vehicle so that we can put a good repair plan together and go ahead and fix this car. But uh, I thought it might be interesting to take a look under the hood. We have some pieces off to say what's here. So if we look at a Mach-E, one of the important things to note is this is a steel car. Um, we've had a lot of discussions in the past about mixed metal construction and panel gaps and how mixed metal construction can lead to poor panel gaps. Um, this is a steel car. Uh, the sheet metal, this is aluminum. Our front reinforcement bar is cast aluminum. These are all bolt on pieces, but if we look at the primary structure of the car, the frame rails, the shock towers, very much like a traditional internal combustion engine vehicle, this is all either mild um, uh, or high strength steel, in some cases ultra high strength steel. So it's interesting to see these because very traditional thinking, especially coming from Ford Motor Company, one of the oldest uh, car companies in the world, that um, they, they continue to think in terms of internal combustion engine vehicles. Uh, we know that rapidly um, manufacturers are shifting to these mixed metal constructions to be able to reduce weight, which allows for a smaller uh, kilowatt hour battery pack and longer range. But right now, we're still looking at a steel vehicle with some aluminum panels. Again, this, this fender here is aluminum. And so some of the sheet metal on this car is aluminum bring the weight down. But the primary structure of the vehicle is still steel. So let's just take a deeper look. What we're looking at here on the inside is essentially the, the uh, charging system for the vehicle as well as the thermal management system to control the temperature inside the battery. So pretty complex as compared to a Tesla's thermal management system. We've seen Tesla's system with the octavalve uh, and it's essentially it's a heat pump. This is a more traditional system and you can just tell by the number of hoses and cables and uh, that it's pretty complex. But um, not a heat pump style but very traditional uh, thermal management system in a vehicle with you know, how they control temperatures and things. Otherwise, when we're looking at the front, we can see the AC compressor here, very similar to a Tesla. We can also see that it's powered off the high voltage system by the orange lines on there, very similar to a Tesla. Tesla. Otherwise, uh, we got our DC to DC converter and charger in the front here. So uh, we, if we trace this out, because on a Mustang and as well as some other products, the charge ports on the front, Rivian has the same thing, that the DC to DC converter and the charger uh, is in the front of the vehicle, whereas in a Tesla, it's gonna be in the back, sometimes under the rear seat. So they bring all those components up to the front of the vehicle because they've decided to put the charger. From here, this then has to go into the battery pack, which is essentially behind it and below. Um, but this is a single motor car, so you might see a dual motor car with a drive unit down here. In this case, we don't see a drive unit. Uh, we just see the, the charging and the um, thermal management system. But we do see a piece of cast aluminum in here for this front cross member, so the beginnings of trying to reduce weight. Uh, very, uh, very traditional. This is a piece of, of extruded aluminum, very similar to a Tesla there. So they're making progress here to be able to reduce weight, and we'll start to see some of the traditional problems with mixed metal construction um, as some of these other manufacturers go forward. But a couple other things to note. So pretty extensive use of radar uh, in this vehicle. We can see uh, a radar sensor on the left, a radar sensor on the right, a central sensor radar here. I'm assuming this is another radar sensor here. It's pretty interesting when you get in and look at some of these things, but uh, how sensitive some of these are. This says right here, oh, let's see, set aside if dropped. So this is for really instructions in the factory. You'll see these sensors have the same thing, which basically says, look, uh, if this thing has hit the ground at all, replace it. Uh, because it's such an, a sensitive instrument, and you think about radar and radar calibration. Um, what Tesla will tell you and what most manufacturers will tell you, if there's any chance this has moved at all, you're going to need to recalibrate your, um, your radar system. So it's interesting to see that, that uh, description on here, set aside if drop. So very sensitive, but interesting that they're using four different radar sensors on this car. It's a bit of overkill, whereas uh, 
Um, Tesla is really using Tesla Vision and camera suites to be able to pick up some of this stuff. These guys are still using radar sensor. And obviously, anytime you add any of these components, it adds cost, it adds weight, and all of the calibrations that you're going to have to do to get this car back together. Um, we know that Tesla is getting better and better with calibrations. And we've talked about this a bunch in the past that um, all efforts are um, really focused on reducing the cost of repair for electric vehicles. It's part of the reason we exist. It's very much our focus too. We know that we have to think differently to be able to bring the cost of repair down on these things because you'll see all kinds of news articles. We know insurance rates are going through the roof right now, but the cost of repair is going through the roof as well. Um, we'll soon put a piece together and really we can walk through this shop and really talk about it's a few million dollars worth of equipment just to get this thing up and running. So, so costs are increasing, but we're thinking about reducing costs. Manufacturers like Tesla are really thinking about reducing uh, costs with things like repairability for gigacastings and so on. Um, we can take a peek at some of the complexity in the front bumper cover. So this bumper cover is pretty badly damaged and it's going to need to be replaced. But if we look, we can see oh, we've got one, two, three, uh, four, five, six ultrasonic sensors. So oh, maybe seven, uh, maybe six. So a suite of ultrasonic sensors, a suite of radar sensors as well. We can see another sensor uh, right up front here, and you can see the complexity of the wiring harnesses in here. So something as simple as a front bumper that you know is primarily a piece of plastic on an internal combustion engine vehicle, uh, you know, might be just a quick swap, and you might have a wiring harness for a few lights. Here, you've got quite a bit of electronics in here. All of these things will need to be tested. You have to confirm that this wiring harness isn't damaged, uh, so that all these systems work. In many cases. Uh, you're going to have to put this vehicle back together uh, and then start the testing process to see if anything's damaged. We can see here we've got a, uh, a camera in the front bumper and a cut coaxial cable. So this is going to have to be replaced. We're talking probably a few hundred dollars. Uh, this wiring harness is no good and this, and this, don't know about the camera itself. But it just goes to show the level of complexity as we get into EVs, especially EVs with the intention of full self-driving. Um, that the componentry inside the vehicle is way more complex than it used to be. All of these things have to be considered when repairing. I know that for our customers, typically the first questions are how much and how long. Um, the answer is I don't know. And by the way, no one else does either. So there's a lot of these biases that we, we have to sit down with customers and explain the differences. Uh, obviously, in the olden days, you know, five years ago, uh, you could write an estimate on a car visually. You might take a look at it, pop the hood, take a look at a few things, come up with a pretty good idea. Those days are gone. Um, so in this case, what could we tell you? I could tell you you need a front bumper cover without taking it off, uh, but I really couldn't tell you whether this coaxial cable is bad or it needs calibration or what. Has this caused any damage to the rest of the self-driving systems in the car? Who knows? So. Um, it's definitely challenging and we definitely have to think differently about these things. What I'll tell you is the estimate uh, really is irrelevant. Um, if you're an EV owner, the best thing you can do is figure out who you want to fix your car and then let the repairer work with whoever's paying the bill. Maybe it's the insurer, maybe it's you. Uh, but you're going to have to dig deeply and make sure you have somebody that understands how to fix these and has some integrity that's not going to kind of rip you off. Um, so uh, just a quick view of a, of a Mach-E and, and uh, what's inside here. And uh, a lot of this really points to the complexity and, and some of the costs and the challenges that we have and consumers have with EVs to figure out um, what does it actually cost to fix these vehicles. So we're going to bring you a lot more information on the cost of repair uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, kind of breaking it down to every single nut and bolt and some of the things that we do differently to be able to uh, prevent runaway costs on these um, and to fix, uh, fix these vehicles properly um, at a fair price and quickly. So uh, there's a quick look at the Mach-E, thermal management system, charging system and some of the complexity and uh, some of the uh, self-driving components of the vehicle. If you have any questions on anything electric or autonomous, please send us an email at contact us at evolve-auto.com or uh, leave a response here in the comments below. Thanks as always for watching and we'll see you soon.